Rapids Read Your Mind, back with another video about my Firebrand RC build off that I'm doing against RC in Motion and RC Militia. Uh, in this video, I'm taking a look at this intercooler that I had on another TTO2 that I built previously. I ordered this, I think, from Asia Tees or someone like that. Uh, but it's made out of metal and it's really cool. It's got these little tubes. And I want to find a better way to mount it onto the TTO2 chassis that I'm using. And I came up with what I think is a pretty clever way to do it because the holes don't exactly match up. But I found these posts that were from an F104 uh, that I had. It's me an F104. And they have these little bushings. And then I figured, you know what, maybe if I just put long enough screws and I drill the holes out a little bit and I modify the foam just a little bit, I think I can get it to fit in there just perfectly. And I have these little grommets here, these little spacers. Um, here I go, I'm gonna drill into the um, stock to me a bumper holder and this cowl, I guess you would call it, um, so that that way I can stick the posts in there, which fit perfectly. Um, by sticking the post down in there, I have somewhere to sort of uh, set the intercooler so that when I put the cowl on top, it just sort of traps it on top. And you can see I had to use a special foam here, one that has the indentation, which allows enough room for the intercooler without causing too much extra length because when you step the body on there, you need to have enough space so that the body doesn't stretch. But you can see I'm just putting these little rubber, um, uh, what do you call them, rubber washers on there. Uh, and you can see up close here, those little posts go down into the hole and then I just set the intercooler on there and then put those little rubber circles on there. And then now I've got the cowl that I just line up, put on top, and all I have to do is screw it into place and then that holds the intercooler in very nicely. Now, obviously, I'll have a little bit more fitment issues that I'll need to deal with when I get the body finished and painted up to make sure that there's no stretching of the body. So I might have to modify the foam a little bit more and um, maybe take off those side pipes if I'm not gonna show those pipes through to allow for enough room for the body to fit. But I think overall in this chassis, it looks pretty cool. The intercooler fits nice on there. I didn't have to bend it or anything like that. Uh, and I think it's gonna increase the quality of the build since this is a competition between RC in Motion and RC Militia, uh, I want to make sure that I have every scale detail dialed in so that when the judges, which is Darren from Firebrand RC and also Christograph Hemistorm, uh, they're going to see the effort put into it. Now, I did buy the exhaust kit from Firebrand RC, and in order for me to mount it on the back, I came up with this unique scenario here using a couple of spacers from a previous kit I had. I think it was an Axial SEX10 for the battery trays. And then I can easily put that right on there and it leaves enough space in there to put, you know, other accessories or attachments. Um, but I think I have another idea that I want to do for this build. And I think I'm going to use this smoke blowing exhaust system that I picked up. I think I got this from AsiaTees.com as well. And it actually blows smoke when you hit the throttle, like exhaust smoke. So I have to figure out a way to mount it to the back of the TTO2 and have it hold into place. And I think I have an idea of how to do that. But with no instructions, it took me a minute to figure out how to mount this and put it together. Um, but I think I'm going to use this one instead of the other exhaust because I think it'll just add more realism to the car. And when it's on display at RCX, it'll look way better. Also, I'm using a really high-end uh, light kit um, that plugs into the receiver. And then it has a lot of different um, controllers in the controller box. This is the um, uh, what is it? OBI LED version 3.0. Uh, so you have a lot more control over lights and different types of cycles that you can use for those lights. So I think I'm going to mount that underneath the actual interior right in the back. And this is a perfect spot for pretty much all of your light kits to go when you're making a drift whip because it doesn't get in the way of the body post and it allows for all the wiring to be held under in the actual interior kit, which is just awesome, right? So what I've noticed is these front and rear posts that I originally mounted to the uh, original post that come with the TTO2, I'm actually going to have to stretch those out a little bit longer. And you can see I did a little bit of paint on the cowl there just to add um, a theme to it because the body is going to be mostly blue. So I have the blue and silver on the inside. So now I'm going to show you what the exhaust smoke looks like. I put a little bit of the exhaust smoke liquid into the exhaust. And then once it's plugged into the receiver, and the vehicle's turned on, then it should blow smoke when you're actually pushing the throttle. So let me show you how that looks right now. Let's see if I can get this thing working so that I can show you. Um, 
Let's see. Is it gonna work? Let's check it out. Okay, there's the actual unit showing that it is in fact turning on. And then, see, if you just push the throttle, the smoke comes out. This thing is rad. Now, I don't know how this is going to affect handling, or if it's going to suck more power, or how long the smoke goes for. I feel like I filled it up pretty high, so I think the smoke's going to last a while. But since I'm installing this into the unit, in order for me to refill it, I actually have to take off the rear exhaust to get to the back of the exhaust to fill it in. But look at how much smoke that billows. That's pretty sweet. That's going to look really cool going around the track. Now. I did get these extra parts from Firebrand RC, they're the axle nuts and I and also the hub extenders. So I want to put on those hub extenders um, just because I don't really want these faux black um, brake discs on there um, because I'm getting some really cool rims from Firebrand RC, Def, I think they're called the Def Star 7 spoke blue and silver aluminum rims and I want those to really be featured so I don't really think I want to have any brake discs behind it or anything like that because I really like the cleanness of the rim. So these aluminum hub extenders should take the place of those original extenders that I had on the TTO2 from the kit and I don't think it really adds anything in terms of performance, it just feels cool. It's kind of like wearing a nice pair of socks, nobody notices them but you. And then I have the axle um, nuts. Now I chose the black and the silver because I don't know what's going to look cooler on the new rims that I get, but for now I'm going to mount up the silver ones. And these look really cool. They look really scale. They have, they, they look actually like real hubs of wheels. So every little detail counts in this build off that I'm doing against RC in motion and RC militia. And I'll be sure to highlight all of these details when I do the final build video um, that's going to be entered in to see who wins. But overall, I think those look really snazzy. Uh, so I'm just going to get to work on getting the rest of the hubs installed, um, getting the temporary wheels that I have on here, and then I can get to work uh, on some of the other pieces that I have to do. I have to paint the bodies. Again, I'm doing two bodies. Um, and also, I have to do the roll cage, which I'm not looking forward to because I've never worked with styrene before. Uh, and I have a bunch of other things I need to complete, including mounting all the... Um, the lights and um, just getting everything done to where I can present a vehicle that I think is show quality that can be shown at the Firebrand RC booth and also will ultimately win this competition build off that I'm having against RC Militia and RC in Motion. So you can see here using the standard wrench that you get with every single kit you buy ever. And um, one more thing, uh, the actual power unit for the uh, piece that I built uh, it has to be powered by LiPo, so I need to use a LiPo battery, but you can see I put in the body extender here for the body extender posts, and then I mounted the box for the exhaust unit right be behind that with some zip ties. Now, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm Read Your Mind, and I am out of here.